Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. Guess what I have this week? This is a Mercedes-Benz AMG G63, which is a G-Class or G-Wagon as we call it. Perhaps the most desirable SUV in the world, but it's also very expensive. But there are so many unique things about the G-Class or G-Wagon that, that you might not be aware, and I'm going to tell you more about it. But first, let me do a full engineer's audit and go through the entire vehicle, and then I'm going to tell you 25 things you should know about this Mercedes-Benz G63. Let's go. Welcome back. So let's do a quick manufacturing audit and quality check on this uh, high profile and very, very desirable SUV. As you can tell, because it's a Jeep style design, it's not like your classic SUV because the hood actually sits on top of the front fender here and you don't really have a gap per se because it doesn't come over here like a normal SUV and you even get exposed uh, wiper blade in the front here. So kind of interesting design, but I can measure the gap over here between the front fender and sort of the side profile which is about uh, 4.5 millimeters. And you have all the exposed hinges here, of course, by the way. And between the front door and the center pillar here is five millimeters. And back here is quite a bit wider at 5.5 millimeter, which is a bit of a surprise. And finally in the back also about five millimeters. So you have to kind of remember that this classic legendary SUV, which is more like off-road truck, wasn't designed to give you precise, accurate body panels and alignment. It was designed to be go anywhere, do anything off-roader with a very classic uh, off-road design. So I'm not even sure measuring the gap means anything in this case because all the panels are pretty well flat. So from that perspective, if I were to kneel down and take a look through the side panel here, everything looks perfect uh, in terms of panel fit, panel alignment, and then the design of the doors and the side panels look all good. And of course the paint job is a classic uh, matte finish on this uh, G-Class. It looks absolutely aggressive in this dark color, which is an optional color as well. But what about the paint thickness? Let's do a quick measurement, see how thick the paint is on this G-Class. So I got my usual paint thickness gauge here to measure the total amount of paint applied on top of the sheet metal. You want the paint thickness to be between 100 to 180 microns. Thicker the better, obviously for durability reasons, but thicker paint doesn't necessarily mean better paint quality. But regardless, we want to measure the thickness. Let's start with the hood here. 126 microns, that's the sort of measurement that we use for thickness. Uh, sometimes it's also measured in other format, like in mils, but we measure in microns, typically speaking. What about the front fender? 103 and front door 104, pretty consistent. And 101, almost exactly the same. Let's do one more measurement here, 107. The reason why it's a little bit thinner than you expect in a typical Mercedes is because there's no clear coat. Because it's a matte finish, there's one extra layer of paint missing on this one to give that matte effect. And that's why it's a bit thinner, which is exactly what I expected. If this was not a matte, matte finish and there's one more layer of clear coat, it will be in 130 micron range, which is exactly what I would uh, expect to see in the Mercedes-Benz product. So paint thickness is basically what I expected. What about the actual quality of paint? Well, because it's a matte finish, it's a little bit difficult to tell uh, because it can't see the reflection that well. But overall, the paint is very consistent and it looks good even in this matte finish. Really good paint job in terms of having a very consistent texture all the way through and uh, it looks really good. Now again, because it's not a reflective, shiny, glossy paint, it's difficult to figure out if it really has the world-class quality, but it's consistent regardless, and obviously it looks great in this paint color. What else can I tell you about the Mercedes G-Class? Well, there's 24 more things to tell you about the G63. The second thing I'm going to tell you is that this is actually not manufactured in the Mercedes factory. In fact, it's built by a company called Magna, which is a Canadian automotive engineering company, and they have a, an actual contracted manufacturing site in Austria that builds a number of vehicles, including the G-Class or G-Wagon, as well as even the Toyota GR Supra and the BMW Z4 and so forth. So this one has been built there, and believe it or not, they have manufactured 500,000 G-Class since 1979. That's when this vehicle got started in manufacturing at the plant in Austria. So surprisingly, they've sold a lot of it and also maybe a surprise to you that it's built by a Canadian manufacturing company. The third thing you should know is that even though the vehicle is built in Austria, the engine is still built in the AMG factory in Germany. In fact, it's hand-built by one person. You can see the name right here on the nameplate 
And uh, you don't get the hand-built engines anymore these days, so this is pretty unique. The fourth surprise is the fact that this has phenomenal amount of horsepower and torque, 577 horsepower and 627 pound-foot of torque coming out of a twin-turbo V8 engine displacing 4 liters. Now there is a cheaper, slightly less powerful version called the G550, but that one still uses the same V8 in terms of 4 liter engine. And the fifth thing is that this massive amount of torque is reached only at 1300 RPM, which is only possible because this is a turbocharged engine. If you have a naturally aspirated V8 engine, it's going to take a little bit more, maybe even into 3000 RPM to reach maximum torque. But when you have turbochargers, especially twin turbochargers, you get to that amount of torque really quickly, which means you get the immediate get up and go when you step on the gas, as I have already experienced with this vehicle. And this high performance version of the Mercedes G-Class goes from zero to 60 in mere 4.5 seconds. Imagine that in this massive SUV, and that's my sixth point. The seventh point is that if you don't want the more expensive G63 like this one, well, you can downgrade slightly to G550, which has 416 horsepower still coming out of a V8 engine, and that one is good for 0 to 60 in 5.9 seconds, so still mighty fast. The eighth point is the fact that these engines are paired with a 9-speed automatic transmission, which is very smooth when I drive this vehicle, and it also has a 2-speed transfer case, and all-wheel drive is obviously standard. The ninth thing you should know is because this is designed to be a true off-roader, it has three locking differentials, front, center, and rear, and that is truly a very rare thing. Most manufacturers, even those vehicles that are designed to be a true off-roader, usually only have center differential and the rear differentials, but not too often do you get all three available. The 10th thing is an interesting point, and that is to do with the power steering. And this indeed has electric power steering, not hydraulic, but this is the only SUV I have driven in the last few years that actually has hydraulic power steering feel. So yes, it is EPS, but they managed to um, calibrate and building a bit of a heft to it, a bit of a heavier feel. And when you move the steering quickly left to the right, it has a really good road feel and you feel like you're actually communicating with the road. That's something that you cannot get anymore in many of the EPS powered vehicles. So this is one of the strengths of the G-Class. So when you combine this powerful bi-turbo V8 engine with the classic feel on the steering, does this SUV truly feel very different from other ones? Absolutely, which is my 11th point. And even though I've driven every possible SUV out there, nothing feels quite like this one. Even when you compare like a Defender or if you compare it to my Lexus GX, they're all too smooth and too comfortable to feel like a true off-roader. Whereas this one reminds you that you're driving a classic legendary Jeep style vehicle with a real off-road feel. And whether you like that or not, well, it depends on your style and your character and your taste. But for me who likes trucks and SUVs, I absolutely love the way this thing feels on the road. The 12th thing you should know is that this does have adaptive variable suspension, which means the suspension will cater to and accommodate different road conditions. But I will admit that this thing rides pretty stiff, and so it might not be for everyone, because when you go over a bump and so forth, it's controlled and manageable, but it is pretty stiff riding. The 13th thing is perhaps one of my gripes here, and I know it's not a big deal perhaps, but there's no keyless entry or keyless lock. So you can't just touch the door to open or to lock. There's no way to do that. You still have to use your remote to actually lock and unlock this vehicle. So that's kind of odd for such an expensive vehicle. However, there is a Mercedes Me Connect app on the phone or your smartphone that you can use to lock and unlock, but there is a bit of a delay. So you definitely don't want to use that on a regular basis to lock and unlock this vehicle. But that is my 14th point in that you can use the app to do a variety of different functions. And the 15th point is something that everyone talks about, which is the sound of the door when you close it. That is perhaps even more impressive than the exhaust sound coming on the side profile here. When you uh, close it, it's like closing a bank vault. Same thing in the back. It almost has a metal clanging sound. It kind of scares you for a moment, but you quickly realize that's the design of this vehicle to give you that solid metal feel. The 16th thing to know is that you do get two 12.3 inches dual screen here, which is beautiful and big. However, believe it or not, it is not touch screen, which means you still have to use this awkward remote touch to manage and to move things around, which is surprising because I did review this vehicle a few years ago and, and I heard that they are going to be upgrading this to a touch panel, but they haven't done it yet. So that's something they really need to change. 
the 17 points uh, even for something like ambient lighting which is popular these days well they went overboard because there's 16 four different colors that you can choose for ambient lighting for this G63 the 18th point is something we all talk about which is a beautiful V8 engine and exhaust sound because this one has a performance exhaust as well so let me start the engine up right here Beautiful. The 19th point uh, I want to talk about is the rear seating area. Even though it's actually a very comfortable seat and supportive seat, there's not much leg room. I'm not very tall, I'm five feet eight or so, and this seat is exactly where I, I need it to be in the front seat. And look how much uh, of a leg room you get. Let me sit into here, right here, to show you. And while this is acceptable, if you got a six footer or someone tall in the front, well, there won't be much leg room. But this hip room is really good and the headroom is actually quite good. So overall, it's still gonna work, but the leg room in terms of the rear is not as good as you think. The 20th thing is something that you won't be surprised, but the fuel consumption and the gas mileage is not very good. In fact, maybe it's even terrible because you only get 13 miles per gallon in city and 16 on highway. So you definitely don't want to buy this if you want to conserve some fuel. The 21st fact that you might want to know is that this is capable of pulling and towing 7,000 pound if you need to tow it. I've rarely, if ever, seen the actual G-Class wagon owners towing something, but it does have pretty good capability. The 22nd thing is that despite the classic design and iconic design, this one does have very modern touches and modern features, including all of the latest safety features such as adaptive cruise control, automatic emergency braking, lane change assist or lane change alert, blind spot monitoring, etc., etc. The 23rd thing is that surprisingly, this still had side swinging rear door which again closes with a nice uh, sound here uh, so for those of you who complained about it in the lexus gx well even the mercedes g wagon has it what about the price tag on this thing well as tested this one is a whopping 242,000 canadian or 179,000 dollars us so definitely not for everyone's budget here but do you get value for that money well only you can decide because it's obviously your money but there's no shortage of people wanting to buy the G-Class despite this price tag. The 25th thing to know is that even though there was a long waiting list for this vehicle uh, for a number of years now, uh, the waiting list is shorter now thanks to the fact that at least here in Canada, government introduced new luxury tax earlier this year. So the waiting list have shortened to the point where you can actually walk in if you want and have $250,000 cash in your hand and take this home. So that could be a good news for some of you who really have the cash and wanting to buy this amazing special G-Class. So at the end of the day, what do I think of the G63 as an engineer? Well, when it comes to off-road capability, ruggedness, and legendary design, and classic feel, there's nothing out there that can match or exceed this particular beast right here. The G63 is truly a special vehicle that can only be purchased by people with a lot of budget, uh, but in terms of ownership experience and feel, I do agree that it is truly a unique experience. Does this mean that it is worth paying this much? Well, once again, that's something you'll have to decide. But if money is no object and I want to buy the best off-road capable SUV, what would I buy? Well, it would definitely be this G63 with a crazy bi-turbo V8 engine. What do you guys think of my review of the new Mercedes G63? Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't done so yet, would you also give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.